Hello everyone, and let's check out Game 7 between Morphe and Harvitz. So Paul Morphe is defeating Harvitz with two extra points in the series of matches. Paul Morphe is leading with four points, and Harvitz is two points. Game 7 between Morphe and Harvitz was played 11 days later from the previous game. This game was played on September 29 because Harvis pleaded ill and postponed the match, but of course in reality he was not ill. He was a completely healthy man, and in this 11-day process, when he postponed the match, some eyewitnesses saw Harvitz playing in the Café de la Regence, playing with all comers except Paul Morphy. So he simply delayed the match, delayed the inevitable loss against Paul Morphy, he knew that he was going to lose. Maybe he realized Paul Morphy was very strong. But maybe in that process, Harvitz was studying chess, studying the moves of Paul Morphy, and preparing a new strategy against Paul Morphy. That was his plan, probably. So he was not ill in the reality. It was only an excuse. And it was also a dirty plan by Harvitz. So anyway, this game was played 11 days later after the previous game, which was long enough for Paul Morphy. And Harvitz is playing with the white pieces. Morphy has the black pieces. And let's check out this very interesting chess game between these two players. So Daniel Harvitz, who is playing with the white pieces, starts the game with playing d4, f5 by Paul Morphy. Again, Paul Morphy is playing the Dutch defense, c4, e6, knight to c3, knight to f6, bishop to g5, bishop to e7, e3, and Morphy castled, bishop to d3, b6, knight from g to e2, bishop to b7, and Harvitz captures the knight, bishop takes on f6, bishop takes bishop, Harvitz castled, queen to e7, Queen to d2, d6, f4, c5, d5, knight to a6. And in this position, Harvest captures the pawn. d takes on e6, queen takes on e6. Rook from a to e1, bishop to h4, attacking the rook. So blocking the bishop with the knight, knight to g3. And Morphy played queen to g6, attacking the knight two times. Knight to d5. And Morphy captures the knight. Bishop takes on d5. Well, if a careless move like bishop takes on g3, then knight to e7 is losing for black, forking the king and the queen, capturing the queen, and black is losing. So this is why we have knight to d5. And Morphy chops the knight with the bishop. Bishop takes on d5. C takes on d5 and then bishop takes on g3, h takes on g3, and Morphy didn't capture the pawn, of course, because bishop is attacking the knight, knight to c7, defending the knight, king to f2, defending the pawn, rook from a to e8, rook to h1, rook to e7, rook to h4, queen to f7, bishop to e2, knight to e8, queen to d3, knight to f6, and it appears that Morphy wants to e4 square with the knight, bishop to f3, defending with the bishop, g6, rook to e2, rook from f to e8, doubling the rooks and targeting the weak pawn, b3, queen to g7, rook to h1, h6, king to g1, g5, and Paul Morphy is slowly advancing with the pawns. F takes on g5, h takes on g5, bishop to h5. Well, in this position, it looks like Harvitz is attacking the rook with the bishop, and Morphy didn't capture the bishop with the knight. Paul Morphy played knight to e4. And can you see the threat? I'm assuming that Harvitz saw the threat immediately as a very strong player, one of the strongest in his time, in his era. So he was not an amateur 
After knight to e4, Harwitz immediately played rook to e1. Well, what was the threat by Paul Morphy? Knight to e4 was a sneaky move. So if something like bishop takes on e8, then queen to a1, that's check. If king to h2, then rook to h7. And white is losing immediately. There is no defense. So basically, after queen to a1, there is no defense. But if let's say rook to e1, then queen takes rook. And everything is falling apart for white. Again, rook to h7, bishop to h5. Rook takes on h5. It's over for white. Checkmate. So knight to e4 by Paul Morphy. And you saw the threat. That's why we have rook to e1. And Morphy played rook to f8, defending the rook, bishop to f3. And Paul Morphy finally captures the weak pawn. Knight takes on g3. And in this position, black is a pawn up. And life is good for black. Black is winning. And black has the better position. This is losing for white. Rook to h3, defending the knight. With the queen, queen to e5. Rook to h6, g4, attacking the bishop. So after this move, Harvis played bishop to d1, king to g7, attacking the rook, rook to h4, rook to h8, exchanging the rooks, bishop to c2, rook to h7 by Paul Morphy. And Morphy is attacking on this weak h file, and Morphy has the one extra pawn, as you know. And Morphy has the winning attacking position, this is completely losing for white. Queen to d2 by Harwitz. And Morphy played queen to b2. A very good move. Pinning the bishop. Rook to d1. Unpinning. Rook to h1 by Paul Morphy. That's check. King to f2. Well, what would you do in this position if you had the black pieces? Maybe capturing the rook should be a nice move. Simplifying the game. So black has the material advantage and simplifying the game fibers for black. So in this very good position, Paul Morphy played a silly move. Believe it or not, he played a drunk man's move. Well, Morphy played rook to f1, a horrible move. And in this position, as you can see, Morphy is leaving the knight and Harvis happily Captures the knight. King takes on g3. While winning the game easily, Paul Morphy ruined everything. After king takes on g3, white has the material advantage and white is a piece up. Well, after king to f2 in this position, of course rook takes rook. A simple and a beautiful move. After rook takes rook, of course queen takes on d1. Knight to e4. And in this position, white is losing. Because in this position, black is a pawn up. So queen to e5. Queen to e1. And let me show you the moves faster. So slowly, black is advancing with the pawns. And queen takes on g3. And white needs to resign. Black has three extra pawns. This was just one possibility, but of course, even... A normal intermediate level chess player would play these moves and manage to win in this position after rook takes rook. Black is winning easily. So after king to f2, Morphy played the silliest move possible. He played rook to f1. King takes on g3. By the way, after rook to f1, if rook takes rook, then knight to e4, that's check. Forking the king and the queen. So if bishop takes knight, of course queen takes queen, and again, this is losing for white. So of course Harvitz was a very experienced and one of the strongest at his time. That's why he solved the threat and he played king takes on g3. Maybe Morphy was distracted because of something. And I don't think Paul Morphy was simply making fun with Harvitz. He was simply distracted because in order to make fun with your opponent, you need to have no class. Morphy was a very nice gentleman, and he was only thinking to defeat his opponent. That was his only goal. So after king takes on g3, Morphy 
probably realized that he made a blunder and he played queen to e5, but thankfully there is perpetual check for black. Queen to e5 by Paul Morphy, king to h4, queen to f6, king to g3, queen to e5, king to h4, queen to f6 by Paul Morphy. And the game ended here. The both gentlemen agreed to a draw. Unbelievable. Morphy threw away the 100% winning chances. After rook to f1, Paul Morphy threw away a certain win. It was completely winning for black. Black needs to capture the rook. And black would easily win in that endgame. But unfortunately, Paul Morphy blundered. Maybe he was distracted because of something. It happens. It happens to everyone. So you can remember the famous game of Bobby Fischer. Bobby Fischer was a super grandmaster. And Fischer blundered his bishop, trapped his bishop in that famous game, as you know. So even Bobby Fischer blundered against Spassky in the World Chess Championship match. So it happens. But I think Paul Morphy still kept his promise by not letting Harvitz win another game. So Harvitz, after game two, after making fun with Paul Morphy, Paul Morphy made a promise and Morphy said, Harvitz will not win another game. And for five games, Paul Morphy is not letting Harvitz win another game. And again, Paul Morphy is leading with four points and Harvitz is two points. Morphy is four and a half points and Harvitz is two and a half points. But of course, in that era, they were not counting the draws. So this was game seven between Morphy and Harvitz. And in the series of matches, Paul Morphy is winning. The first player who scores the seventh win is going to be victorious. So anyway, this is the last position of the game. And I see you guys next time in game eight between Morphy and Harvitz. So take care and bye bye for now.